But Tony Underwood, who joins us live now, you winked at him, Tony. What, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> well, uh, because you say accepting the challenge. I think, um, well, it's bringing the chills back watching that again. Um, so uh, I think the guys faced the heart for a few times, but that was especially a special one for me. And uh, um, as we do, you know, that's the tradition, isn't it? When you see a hacker, you just, uh, that's what you uh, do, accept the challenge. And um, certainly knew what challenge was coming my way that day. Um, and the wink, though, you know, I mean, was it a pre-planned? Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't do it as well as you do. Maybe if I'd done it as well as you, it would have come off better. But uh, no, it was, I don't know, just uh, I, I couldn't exactly mouth anything to him and whisper sweet nothing. So <laughs> the, the only the visual I could give him that, okay, the challenge was accepted was, uh, well, I thought it was a nod, but obviously uh, I must have had something in my eye at the same time as well. Tears of fear, perhaps, because he, <laughs> it must have been terrifying uh, looking at him. Uh, and even at your level and, and a brilliant player as you were, I mean, describe to us what it was like to stand in front of him knowing you had 80 minutes of that coming at you. <laughs> well, I mean, you look at the combination. Uh, well, you, ideally, with the two guys you got there, isn't it? You got a guy, Ben K size, but almost as quick as Oz, um, but not, not, not quite as quick as Austin, obviously. But um, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, just the combination that he had. And uh, yeah, as has been reported, he brought quite a bit of anger with him that day with his, uh, I'd like to think, misquotes. But um, um, I think in some ways as a player, don't you, you sort of talk about, uh, well, you, you talk yourself into sort of the, the positive side of things. And that was my positive that hopefully a guy that size could possibly uh, uh, run as quickly as he did. But, um, Austin soon. was a lot quicker than him when he was running away from tackling him. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, see, Tony, I, I think you get a lot of unfair flack for the uh, the try that he scored because you actually slowed him down significantly. It was Mike Cat who missed the tackle. You took him from full speed down to about 25% speed. And, uh, oh. you know, I, I think Catty should have made that tackle. If he'd have made that tackle, everyone would have said, oh, well done, Tony, he brought, slowed him down. Austin, you're very kind to me, but get to the footage. Uh, I'm the one dragging back. It was Will who made that little tap. <laughs> no, I was lying. <laughs> I was thinking the scene, but you're very kind, mate. What, what, <laughs> but, what, uh, what was the tackle plan, Tony? Was it just laces, boot laces? <laughs> that was, what was it? Get in his way. I, I think uh, I look back at footage of the day, and uh, most of the time when I was about to tackle a guy, well, stop stop him or slow him down, or an iota or bit to... Um, the ball either went over his head or it went somewhere else. Um, the amount of uh, the issue we had that day was he just got so much turnover ball and loose ball with the space to run in. And if he has that, you know, it's his, your, your history. Um, so the plan was, well, yeah, we, we did kind of have this. Obviously, South Africa learned for the week after in terms of the game plan. Um, and indeed, you know, if there was substitution in those days. I know it's talked about as a factor nowadays, but... I'd have probably been off after 10 minutes and brought Ian Hunter on for his, <laughs> for his <laughs> physical size and defensive capabilities. But uh, um, I had to uh, just manfully take him on on my own. Tony, is it one of those things, with the benefit of hindsight, everyone knows what he became? And so, but at the, in the lead-up to the game, did you realise what a beast you were going to face? Or, you know, he was quite new. No one really had a, a winger of that size. Did you, were you quite confident going into the game? And, and was it sort of <laughs> 20 minutes in that you realised... <laughs> it's a Scotland and Ireland game building I know, up to it. But, but, the whole but, team st over but still, we, that was the game where he went to a new level and everyone went, oh, this guy's unplayable. Yeah. Um, did I know? I mean, I certainly knew, as you just talked about in the Harker, you, you realise the size of the guy when you're up against him like that. But um, um, uh, what all you can do, with, as, a, as a team, we were very confident. We, you know, we'd just beaten Australia in the quarter final with the world champions. Um, we'd gone through, through a grand slam. So we'd been unbeaten for quite a long time. I'd scored a try myself the week before. And um, so we were all individually and I think collectively feeling very confident. I, from what I hear, that I don't think the um, the uh, selection meeting went on for that long. It was really a case of, well, Tony's on fire. We're going to pick him and, and and have a positive attitude to how we're going to uh, play the game. You know, the, the, the pack were, 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 were firing. So we just thought we were going to be on the front foot. And obviously, if you are, that's obviously where my sort of uh, abilities come to, fruition, to come to fruition. Tony, before you played him in build-up in the week, did you have a conversation? Because I was opposite on a few occasions and Phil Larder said to me all the time, go low, 
go low, hit his legs. And I said, listen, Phil, I've played against him in the sevens. Both me and you, I think, were on the field in the sevens in Hong Kong. And uh, he was quite, he wasn't soft, but he wasn't as hard up top. If you hit him around the chest, like Gregan used to do all the time, you had a good chance of getting tangled up in his legs. But if he went near his legs, they were literally like running into a brick wall. Did you have the same experience? I mean, you didn't have a defence coach in 95. You had Jeff Cook, who did everything, and the massage. <laughs> it was Jack, Jack Rowe by then. Jack Rowe, yeah. was it? Jack Rowe. Yeah, Jack Rowe and Les Cusworth. And, um, Slam. So, well... I'd like to say that, Oz. I'd like to take all those things and say I was going to put them into practice, but I, I didn't even get close to the guy. So uh, um, that was the freaky side of him. Um, he, he just had an unbelievable step and a, and a sway and, a, and his acceleration. And he, you just couldn't get near the guy. I mean, if he, had a, if he had a yard to run at you, and then obviously with that, trying to close space on him, he'll just fend you off. So, yeah, I'd like to think I could have done all those things, Oz. But, um, um, yeah. Like a lot of people, you just couldn't sometimes just couldn't get near the guy. Um, I had a lovely chat with John Kerwin about Jonah recently enough, and JK was saying that when he was in his room and Jonah Loma came in, he was sharing with him, and he said, No, mate, forwards down the corridor. And he went, No, I'm actually <laughs> back. And then he took his top off, and JK went, Right, my career is coming to an end very, very quickly. But he was also talking about how quiet he was and how humble he was. And of course, later on in his career, they didn't know he had a kidney disorder, they didn't realize he had all these issues going on. But, uh, you know, a very, very humble guy. You, you spoke to him after that game. How, how did you find him? Well, I didn't actually speak that long. I, I actually um, had a chance, well, as is a time honored tradition, I walked into the changing room, you know, to do the decent thing in there. Well, I thought swap a shirt, but I actually walked out minus anything. So he got mine. I didn't get anything back um, for, for a variety <laughs> of reasons, I believe. But um, uh, we just shared a few words. Uh, well, just just very quiet one. He was just receiving some treatment. Um, I don't know why he did, came up through that game unscathed, but uh, yeah, he, um, he uh, just had a few quiet words. You know, he was young. He, even then, I think he was only about 20 in that World Cup, um, only a year or two out of uh, just really being plucked from the streets. And uh, and I, I think it, as, as his stardom grew and he just had to do more and more off the pitch, then that confidence came out of him and he started to speak more. At the time, yeah, you'd hardly get any words out of the guy. Um, but yeah, humble, humble was the attitude I saw when I, when I had my brief encounter with him after the game, which is as close as I got. <laughs> hey, you're still getting free Pizza Hut out of it. I am absolutely not. Just one year's worth. Uh, one year's worth. But uh, I'm still eating the stuff. That's the good. <laughs> you don't look like you are. <laughs> you look fantastic. Uh, look, thank you so much for joining us and reflecting on that, on that day. And uh, really lovely to hear from you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Awesome. I hope. Take care of yourself, Tony. Oh, All the best. Wow. Gosh, wonderful, wonderful times. Um